What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Also, welcome back to my video series, A Closer Look. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Samburu people of Kenya. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. Our Black Truth is Black owned and operated and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at ourblacktruth.com links to everything in the description box below. As with all my Closer Look videos, I try my best to pronounce names or titles that the people use themselves, so please bear with me if you notice any mispronunciations. Also, with videos like these, textbook knowledge on a particular ethnic group can be a little lacking sometimes, so if you are from this African ethnic group, I would really appreciate additional insight, correction, or revised context so that we can truly understand these African people from the best available historical perspective. The Samburu people are members of the Nilotic language family and share many cultural practices with the Maasai people of Kenya. They are believed to number around 200,000 people. The name Samburu itself is thought to be a derivation of the Maasai word Sambur, which is a leather pouch used for carrying meat and honey. This Maasai word Sambur being applied to the Samburu people may suggest that the Samburu were once a hunting and gathering society. The Samburu people, however, refer to themselves as Loikop. In the 19th century, the Samburu were frequently called the Burkineji or people of the white coats. Their own name for themselves, Lokop or Loikop, and its meaning is an ongoing debate. It seems to mean something like owners of the land. The Loikop or Samburu are believed to have migrated from the Nile River in Sudan in around the 15th century. Today, they largely live in the northern highlands of Kenya's Samburu district. They practice pastoralism and they measure their wealth by the size of their cattle herds. Interestingly enough, the various Samburu clans have a distinct brand to identify their cattle and each family slits the air of their cattle according to a particular pattern. The Samburu people believe in a god called Nkai. The Samburu god Nkai is associated with all of the forces of the world, especially the procreative. The word is itself feminine, as are many, though not all, of Nkai's metaphorical associations. A few people claim to have been taken to Nkai's home, and in these cases, Nkai is described as a family with men, women, and children. Men and women both participate significantly in religious life. Men and women have interdependent roles in major ceremonies with women singing prayers and praises while men perform most blessings. Both men and women pray to Nkai daily, asking for protection, human and animal fertility, and the rain and grass necessary for survival. The Samburu, like some other ethnic groups in the region, are known for their elaborate dress. Traditionally, Samburu warriors dress up in beaded necklaces, bracelets, and earrings as well as wear beaded headbands. Their hair tends to be elaborately dressed with red clay. Most Samburu wear two pieces of cloth, one wrapped around the waist and a second around the shoulders. Previously, the beautiful colors and patterns of Samburu cloth used to help identify the age of the wearer but this doesn't seem to be regulated to any particular age group any longer. Speaking of the vibrant colors and patterns of the Samburu clothing, the men do not shy away from expressing themselves. Samburu men can be seen wearing rich colors of pink or black cloth, decorating themselves with bracelets, anklets, and pendants. Warrior class men wear their hair in long braids, while ironically the women shave their hair. In general, Samburu dress in bright red clothes with loads of accessories and jewelry. The respect of elders is the backbone of Samburu society. The eldest members of Samburu society dictate and gatekeep the traditions and culture. 
They have the last word in all matters and even have the power to curse younger members of the ethnic group. The elders are fully responsible in upholding law and order and are devout followers of Nkai's guidance. During colonialism, the Samburu were considered to be a part of the Northern Frontier District, an area that was closed off to Europeans and Africans who were not citizens of colonial Kenya. Although this isolation freed the Samburu from the more burdensome demands of the colonial government, independence brought an end to the NFD and an abrupt introduction to the politics and market economy of modern Kenya. While some Samburu have settled in towns in northern Kenya, most continue to live with their herds in rural areas. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.